uh, wanted to share with you just some of the major things that I've learned this year. Uh, again, this might be old news for those of you who've been doing this for longer than I have, uh, but I thought I'd share them with you. Uh, one is that there are two uh, two things I've changed about my my whole eating habits and everything that has made the biggest difference. Uh, you know, like many of us, I've tried other diets in the past and, you know, really had very limited success with it over the years. Uh, for the first time in my life, these two changes, you know, if, if you get nothing else out of this, these two distinct changes that I made resulted in losing 20 some pounds and keeping it off. Um, the first change was intermittent fasting. Uh, now, if you're new to the term, uh, one way of doing it, which is the way I pretty much do it, uh, is you eat in an eight hour window and you don't eat the other 16 hours of the day. So think of it kind of like, like a work shift. You know, you could, if you have your first meal at nine in the morning, then you're going to have your last meal that day at 5 p.m. After that, you know, you can have uh, water, not juice, but water or tea. Um, I wouldn't recommend coffee unless you plan on staying up late. Uh, but, you know, just uh, no more food. No more food. No bananas, no snacks, no crackers, nothing. Like, no food. Uh, no soup, none of that. Just, uh, not, if you're going to eat some food, eat it between 9 and 5. Or if your first meal is at 7 in the morning, then your last meal would be at 3 in the afternoon. Again, you can adjust it if you're on a night, sh night schedule or whatever. But the whole idea is that you're only going to eat your meals uh, during that 8-hour window and give your body the other 16 hours to process the food, to uh, avoid insulin spikes, uh, and it'll just, it'll just, you'll be amazed at uh, how much that's going to help. The interesting thing is that within three days of starting into, uh, intermittent fasting, I found that, I, you know, at first I was like, you know, oh my God, how am I going to survive through the night without, you know, a snack? But after about three days, I found that I actually was not hungry for anything more than one big meal which was my main meal, and then maybe five hours later, I would have like a half meal, you know, like a very small kid-sized portion meal. It might even only be like three hard-boiled eggs, uh, you know, something very light. Um, and, and I've been doing that now, I think, for about coming up on three months now. And I found that once I started the intermittent fasting, I just... I, I just really, I'm not hungry for three meals. Uh, like I said, I get one big meal, and then five hours after that, I have a very light meal, just a little something before, you know, the rest of the day. And that's it. Uh, the rest of the time, I drink my apple cider vinegar, you know, water, or I drink, uh, you know, iced tea, or uh, I'll have coffee in the morning. Uh, I try to not drink it after that. Um, and the coffee with no sugar, just heavy cream or butter, you know. Um, so the intermittent fasting is the first thing that made a huge difference. That 16 hours that you're not eating, you will be amazed. And really, it's more than 16 hours because, like I said, I'm now, I'm now on a schedule where I'm eating in about a five-hour window. So that gives me 19 hours out of the day that I'm not having any insulin spikes. Because every time you eat something, doesn't matter if it's a big meal or a small snack, every time you eat something, your body starts producing insulin. And if you get too much of that, that's a bad thing. So that's the first thing, the intermittent fasting. The second thing that's been just a major game changer has been the keto diet. Uh, now, I, there, you can get into it and you can get very involved in how strict you want to be with your keto. Some people are like a little bit dirty keto. Uh, again, just going in the keto direction is going to make a huge difference uh, in losing weight and keeping weight off. Because it's not just uh, how much you eat or when you eat, it's what you eat. Now, again, it, you can get into, there's a lot of videos here in, you know, the Healthy Habits group. Uh, now, you can check out all the different doctors that talk about keto, and you can get into the minutia of it. But here's what it boils down to if you want to, like, take a big picture. You're eating meat and vegetables. 
okay not from a can because that's already been heated and most of the vitamins have been you know heated out of that during the pasteurization process but not canned vegetables we're talking real vegetables that grew out of the ground and you steam them uh, you know there's a wide variety you know there's broccoli and so many things you know that you can uh, carrots and whatever I know some people are not into carrots with their keto again depends on how how strict you want to be about it but the point is the food you're eating is either meat and that can be beef chicken fish eggs eggs are great for you um, or and and then you're eating vegetables uh, you're getting the fiber, you're steaming them, you're making stir fries, stir fries with meat, um, and, and that's basically what you're eating. Now what you're not eating on a keto diet is sugar, uh, so no more cookies, candy bars, sodas, none of that. You're staying away from carbs, which includes all breads, bagels, pastas, anything that's got uh, processed flour in it. Uh, and it doesn't matter if it's wheat flour, white flour, any kind of flour. You're basically staying away from carbs because carbs turn into sugar. What you're doing is you're getting, training your body from running on sugar, which is, you know, the glucose, and you're switching it over uh, what's called ketosis to run on fat. Now that your body is in fat burning mode, well, it's going to start getting back to the intermittent fasting during that 16 hours that you're not eating. Instead of looking for glucose and, and making you crave breads and cereals and such, instead, your body's going to start burning the fat that you already have. So that's how the two work together, is you're getting off of running uh, on sugar and you're starting to run your body off of fat. Okay, so those I have found from personal experience just a total game changer. And it's not just even a, the amount of weight that you're going to lose, because you will lose weight and kind of plateau. That's okay. The other benefit is that your body is running on cleaner fuel. You're not eating a bunch of food that is hard on your body. And it's hard in so many ways. The doctors go into this in more detail you know, the, 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 the burden that it puts on your liver and your kidneys uh, to process all this sugar that comes into your system. So, uh, so you're, it's not even just about how much weight you're going to lose. You're, you feel better because you're, you're basically running on cleaner fuel. You know, burning fat is what your body does best with. Being willing to understand that all these years we were given a lot of bad, misleading information. Bad information about eggs, bad information about avocados, bad information about a high fat diet. Uh, you know, again, look at the keto, that really is the way to go. Uh, because if all you do is eat like what you normally eat, and then you toss in a salad twice a week, you're never gonna lose weight that way. You're just not, ever. You know, that, that salad really has no impact. You have to change how much you're eating and what you're eating. And if you do that with intermittent fasting and keto, I'm telling you, uh, do it. Do it for a month. You will, like me, I just can't go back. I, I, I can't go back to eating three meals a day. I, I, I've tried. I've tried having two full meals in one day. I feel like I had two Thanksgiving dinners. I'm just full to the neck. I just, I've just eaten way too much. I think my stomach has actually shrunk a bit because now, again, my big meal of the day uh, might only be about a pound and a half to two pounds of food. And I am just stuffed. And I am, you know, maybe five hours later, like I said, I'll, I'll have some kind of a snack and that's it. I'm good for the day. Uh, that's, that leads me to the other thing that I would want to share is, yeah, it's good to stay hydrated, drink a lot of water, but include electrolytes. Because if you drink a lot of water, which is good, you're also passing out your electrolytes. So you want to get, get an electrolyte powder that does not have sugar. Uh, there are some that are made with uh, stevia. That's about the best ones. Um, and then just mix it in your bottle of water and it'll make it taste like orange or raspberry or whatever. And, uh, and, and make sure you get your electrolytes that way. You can also, if you're in a bind, get the, uh, the Gatorade G Zero. 
Now, it's true that it has no sugar, but it also has the artificial uh, sweetener sucrose. So that's only like an emergency thing if you're on the road and you pull into a 7-Eleven, get the G0. It's not going to kill you. It's got electrolytes and no sugar. Uh, but for daily use at home, I get the little packets that are made with stevia. So uh, just wanted to share that with you guys and tell you that, again, for me, after years of trying other diet approaches, this is the first thing that's ever worked. Intermittent fasting, uh, the keto diet, uh, staying up on your electrolytes, and then if you, when you get that as a habit, you may want to start doing like I did and taking it a little further, looking at the, the types of uh, uh, mineral supplements that are best for your body, uh, things like zinc and magnesium, selenium. Uh, again, there's tons of videos in the Healthy Habits uh, uh, group. Uh, and you can get more info on that. Okay, so I uh, hope you find that helpful, and I guess we'll talk about it a little more in the comments if you have any questions. All right, catch you guys later. Bye-bye.